Welcome back to AB Veterans Talk. We're continuing our conversation with this week's guest, Tom Bunce. So uh, we're in fire season now, coming up on a season when uh, boy, we had all those rains this winter and, of course, the weed and the growth. Is, yeah, I saw that going. <laughs> yeah, massive, you know. So now we're all walking around on eggshells out here in SoCal because of the uh, the fire fire threat. We're already having a pretty pretty brisk Yeah, but it's very active. So... But, uh, you know, in the old days, uh, uh, many of us grew up watching the fire bombers fly around, and they were made up of old World War II aircraft, and, and uh, boy, little, little guys didn't carry much volume, but I guess the mindset finally came from somewhere that, hey, we have all these 747s and DC-10s floating around, you know, how about filling those up with a ton of of uh, what do they call the the stuff they draw? The retired. Well, retired. There's a FOS check. It's like the Foz trade check. name. FOS check. Yeah. For some of it. Yeah. And uh, let's uh, see if some of these big aircraft can get in there, and then we can basically create our own uh, uh, downpour. Right. In right. massive, you know, stuff. So how did NASA get in, involved with that? Well, the uh, ten tanker, and I think at the time it was Evergreen, had mm -hmm. developed those two very large aerial transport, VLAT. Yeah, and they had come up with a good system for for de dealing with that, and uh, and had contracts with Cal Fire and some of the other states, but the National Forest Service was cautious because of the C one thirty crash that had occurred, I guess in the nineties or something like that, mm -hmm. and um, so they wanted NASA to independently check out what these guys had done to make sure that it was safe to fly these things. Right. And um, so we came in with a small team at Dryden, mm -hmm. at that time Dryden, now Armstrong, mm -hmm. and um, looked at their procedures and looked at the performance of the aircraft. Uh, that was my job, was to look at uh, single engine out performance mm -hmm. and compared that to what they were flying currently mm -hmm. with the, uh, the Neptune and the uh, King Air lead, trans lead airplanes. Right and uh, found out that they have very similar performance because even that's a big airplane, it's only flying at half its weight, normal takeoff weight, mm -hmm. with, with the full load of retardant of mm -hmm. 100,000 pounds. And so, um, and then they could drop that. And so their single engine out performance is just as good as anything else. Right. So that was, that was my main job was to, to look at that. And then the pilots flew the procedures to make sure that it seemed like it was and that it was a reasonable thing to do to come in that low, right? And uh, and then be able to get out of any situation. Yeah, when they, uh, you know, once again going through, they, they did lose some aircraft. The C one thirty, I remember the wings folded up on it. I think they had a PB, PBY, uh, the, the old B twenty four airframe that they lost also, uh, which you know was giving it some bad press there for a while. And, you know, I was kind of, just kind of knocked something off of my head there. So with the full load of retardant on the, on the, on the plane, it's still at only half the weight of what the airplane is capable of carrying. Right, right. That just is phenomenal. Yeah, because there's no, there's no seats, there's no people, right. and there's yeah. no cargo. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's just, and then you can, you can dump that in eight seconds. Yeah. So when they're, they're, they're doing a, a run on a, uh, a drop there, the the transition, you know, how that disperses. I mean, that's all got to be taken into account, right? Yeah, and in fact, they have a computer control system for how much the doors open. Right. Uh, at least on the on the, the DC-10 have has doors, and it uses the same type of um, uh, carrying capacity the, as the helicopters, mm -hmm. the big Sikorskis. Right. And they modified those to have a front end and a back end for those. So that has to be an even feed, is it? Is yeah. It so they, they, if not, the airplane would... Right, uh, right. And they, they control how much the doors open and how wide, and, and that way they can get different levels of coverage. So right. if they only need a light coverage for light fuels, they can get a longer line. Mm -hmm. And if they need a heavier one for, for dense, like trees, right. they can dump faster. Right. And, uh, gosh, you know, that's just uh, ph phenomenal. And, uh, you know, uh, 
the incidences, I remember up here, I think it was up here in the Tehachapi fire when the, it was a DC-10 clipped a tree. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, that, that was before we got involved. Right, you know? but I mean, and that, that was, was part of what the... prompted the study. That yeah. prompted the yeah. study, exactly, because, you know, when you're in a DC-10 and you're down here clipping trees, getting yeah. ready to drop fire load, you know, that would be... You know, I, I can't even imagine a pilot, co-pilot, sitting in the front of there and what they're, they're looking at out that windscreen. Yeah, I and, heard that they... It, when they get a new DC-10 pilot in, yeah. Yeah. it takes them a while to get used to being that low. Yeah, because they're they never do except when right when they're landing. Yeah, and so when there's you know you're seeing trees go by you know, like that oh, because man. you're in a canyon you know sometimes yeah. You know, yeah but you're always going downhill. Yeah, so you've always got the ability to to get away quickly. Yeah, that, that was one of the things we we studied was like go you know fight the fire going downhill so that you can go even. Right, and when you drop that load. They actually have to push forward on the oak to keep it level. Wow. Because it lefts, it load, unloads the plane so much that they yeah, have to keep, push forward to keep it level. Wow. So if you when you dump it, it just raises like an elevator. Wow. Uh, I know I was just looking at uh, in our own Aerotech news here, and they were doing some 747 drops. Yeah, yeah that was Fox very Field. recent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, out there. Yeah, and that's, that's a new company doing that one. Is that? Yeah. So that's... Uh, that's good stuff. I mean, once again, we need that fire suppression equipment right. like that. Yeah. Boy, to get in there and jump on stuff quick like that is uh, is what we need, you know, when those, those fires break out there. So Yeah, and what was really great about this whole thing was that um, uh, right about the time I was, we were wrapping up the, the report, and they delivered the report, had it approved, and they said, all right, let's, let's do this well, on, on National Forest Service land. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine has a ranch right across the, the way here, mm -hmm. and that was... 2010. Yeah, they had a big fire. Yeah, and um, started over the hill from them, and the DC-10 came along and laid a beautiful line right next to their homes yeah. and saved that that area. So yeah. it was it was a nice reward for having worked on yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great uh, it's a great legacy to be involved with stuff like that, and it's so outside the norm. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like ah, what did you do? It's like you know, well, I made it possible for big aircraft yeah. to dump tons of water on yeah. fires. You yeah. know. So that's cool. So we'll take our break here and stuff, and we'll get into uh, one more segment here with Tom and, and some cool stuff that he's been doing also that's aviation related. So we'll be right back. I'm Bob Alvis, and thanks for joining us for this segment of AV Veterans Talk. 